If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. You're, you're different. You had a sense of per a negative perception, should I say, of Islam. Sure. Um, that wasn't sort of based on mainstream media, can I say, or it was more rather on culture. And it was a massive deal, like you said, to become Muslim. Um, so how was that growing up? Your, your Absolutely. Of Islam? Absolutely. So first, may Allah forgive me, of course, but yes, Good. to say... I was talking negative about Islam would be a total understatement. So I back then, the old Bobby, I used to hate Islam. And the reason being is in Macedonia, as I said, we had this occupation, that's how it's called, for 500 years by the Turks, by the Ottoman. And we always associated Islam with something negative, something warlike that conquered our lands and tried to convert us. Mm -hmm. which now reading about it and learning it is not the case because otherwise we wouldn't have Christians nowadays whatsoever. It would be impossible if they really tried to convert all the Christians. But nevertheless, growing up, hearing that rhetoric all the time already had a very negative perception of Islam. And then later on, when I was in my teens, mm -hmm. war broke out in Macedonia. And this time it was the Macedonians against the Albanians, which I stated were the Muslim population. And I associated that with Islam yet again. So I said, OK, now everything that I've been told about the Muslims attacking the Christians is coming to fruition now. And now I see how they really are. They're showing the true colors. And now the Albanians try to fight over Macedonia and win over our land. So mm -hmm. there was that perception. And moreover, then, as you mentioned in the beginning there, yes, I was unfortunately involved in trading narcotics, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. In Germany, I mean, I have to point the finger at myself first and foremost, right, because I was in that business myself. However, my associates predominantly were Muslim and most of them would end up in jail. So I got lucky, alhamdulillah, but they end up in jail. And then when they got out of jail, a couple of months later, they would go back to jail because they would always fall into the same patterns. And I would associate that then yet again with Islam, you know. So therefore, my perception was not based upon the mainstream media whatsoever, quite the opposite. Once they started to push the whole 9-11 incidents, I was very disinterested in it. So for me, it was just a political move yet again. I wasn't interested in it whatsoever because I grew up with certain things that I saw from my perception, from my perspective, and this is what I saw as real. I would never watch TV and then say, ah, this is the truth. Now I have to obey by what mainstream media told me. You know, So that wasn't really the reason behind it even though I see, of course, that there is huge negativity within mainstream media against Islam. But nevertheless, for me, it was my own personal experience and my ignorance, I have to say, because I never opened up the Quran, nor did I ever visit a mosque, right? I simply saw people doing certain things, and I then ignorantly associated that with Islam. And to be totally honest here, if I would look at Christians nowadays, and I would associate that with Christianity, then mm -hmm. I must think that Christianity is the absolute worst, the antichrist religion per se, right? Yes. Because I've seen so much degeneracy, it is absolutely unbelievable. I don't want to dive too deep here. I don't know which topics you describe on your channel. But we see this whole push nowadays of women being first and foremost on Instagram and then uh, graduating in their career to OF. And yep. then you see them wearing cross necklaces and having <laughs> tattoos that say only God can judge me, right? <laughs> so if I would judge Christianity by that standard, then Christianity must be the absolute worst. Yeah, right? So the, therefore, we can never judge a religion by the people, by the practitioners. No, I, I mean, I do know Christians that are wholesome, good people, but I 100%, I, I completely see where you're coming from. I do discuss it on, on the channel as well. And the Christianity is very... Oh, it's just confusing. I think you know there's there's traditional Christianity and then there's Christianity with tr Trinity and then like you said, there's people that say I'm Christian, but they you know they maybe bat for another team, you know LGBTQ, all that sort of stuff coming in with priest, priests actually coming into doing that sort of stuff as well, and it it doesn't make sense. Um, no. But what led you then to? I'm really interested to know what then led you to Islam because if you were mm. so against it or you really didn't want to have anything to do with it what actually made you i've heard a bit that you spoke about on your channel but yeah what what was that light bulb moment 
Sure, sure. Yeah, so I wouldn't say there was a light bulb moment. It was a gradual transition. So first and foremost, as you said in your intro, you labeled me as a Buddhist. That might be not completely correct. So I have a lot of experience with Buddhism, even so far that I ended up in the uh, monasteries here in Thailand, and I fasted with the monks, and I meditated with the monks, all of those practices. However, I never converted officially. And this is what I have to say to the haters out there as well. They told me that I am changing my religions like other people change their underwear. That is not correct. This was my first official conversion. So I dabbled in Buddhism, Hinduism, New Age, shamanism, psychedelics, and all kinds of things. But officially, I never converted. However, now looking back, I see that it was a gradual process of learning and finding truth, right? So therefore, all my motivation behind any type of endeavor was always finding the truth. So when I was looking into diet, I want to understand how the human body works. And for me, it was crystal clear that if there is a species-specific diet, a diet that is catered fit to our species, then this must be the truth for our biology. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we all know that a lion eats meat and a cow eats grass. So there must be something that applies just like that for the human being, I thought. Mm -hmm. And this is why I experimented with veganism, with a carnivore diet, even the raw carnivore diet, where I was just eating raw meat oh, and all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I experimented with fasting. I did 10 day water fast. I did 35 day juice fasting, all kinds of practices to understand this physical body. But that wasn't enough because then I want to understand I don't think that I'm just this body. So what is behind this all? So how do I pursue spiritually? How do I understand what I truly am? And so this is how I got into spiritual matters, Buddhism, Hinduism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, in this endeavor, I never looked at Islam because I had this bias that Islam is the enemy's religion and it is evil. That's it. For me, it was crystal clear, even though I was totally ignorant, that Islam must be evil. I had this preconceived notion. And so therefore, after this huge excursion where I even ended up in South America brewing ayahuasca, which is a psychedelic brew with the shamans and doing ritual dances and whatnot, <laughs> I have to laugh now because it sounds like a different person. But after that, I came to the conclusion, OK, now I did all of this, but I feel absolutely empty. I mm -hmm. feel like I'm missing such a big part of myself that I used to have when I was a child. When I was a child, everything was so simple. I was simply praying to one God, and I knew that my prayers would be heard. Yes. And I talked about this on my channel as well, just a little side excursion. When I was nine years old, I got very chubby. I was a little chubby kid. <laughs> and the only prayer, of course, selfish, but I was a kid after all, was every night, God show me how to lose weight. Oh, that's yeah, so yeah. quite sad that you had a nine-year-old, that you, you knew that this is not how I feel, you don't feel good. No, I didn't feel good. And moreover, the thing is that I grew up being pretty skinny. But then when I started eating a lot of candy, I got fat. However, I didn't make the connection and I didn't understand. Because at first I thought, okay, there are fat kids and there are thin kids. But I used to be a thin kid and now I'm a fat kid. So what's up with that? Someone right. need to reverse the cycle, but I don't know how. And because I'm a bit older, I didn't have internet during that time, right? So I had no internet. I had no access to any type of information. And therefore, I was really struggling finding that information. So all I had is praying to God, right? And every night I would pray, God, please show me the secret. You know, how do I lose weight? And there was this one day when my mom took me with her to a friend of hers for a little get together with her friend where they just drink coffee, eat cakes and slander other people. I don't know what women do. You know? <laughs> so for me, it was extremely boring because that friend of my mom didn't have any children. So therefore, no toys either. So I was the only kid there at nine running around in circles, right? And just trying to find something to entertain myself. And the only thing I could find was a ladies magazine. Of course. So, yeah, so I open up this ladies magazine and I see on the cover, actually, it says the secret to weight loss. <laughs> then, okay, <laughs> that's it, you know? <laughs> Amen, I said back then. So yeah, my <laughs> prayers have been heard and I opened up page six and on page six it said, the secret to weight loss is don't eat after 8 p.m. But the thing is, I took it as gospel, as they say, you know, so I took it and I said, okay, I'm going to apply this. And really from that day out on, I never ate after 8 p.m. And really? when I was 16, yeah, really, really, I was so disciplined with it. Even if we would go to family occasions, certain festivals or whatnot, I would never eat after 8 p.m. And by the age of 16 years old, I lost all the weight, you know, and I was a skinny teenager, you know. There you go. So, it did work. So God, that, God that does work. have prayers. Yeah, God answered my prayers, exactly. And so therefore, I always had that memory of me, you know, simply praying to God and having this very pure connection 
if I just pray to God, my prayer will be answered and everything will be all right in a nutshell. You know, I don't have to worry about anything. Everything is fine. However, then in my 20s, as I said, I went through all of this struggle, all of this searching to find truth. And in the end, I was left with nothing, right? This is when I decided to return to Orthodox Christianity, because as I said, Islam is the enemy. All I have is Orthodox Christianity. So the only solution for me to reconnect to God was to return to Orthodox Christianity. So I thought. Mm -hmm. But now comes the kicker because I was the first one in my family to actually research Orthodox Christianity and study it. Okay. Nobody else did. So by default, yes, we are Orthodox Christian, but I like to call us cultural Christians. Because on the Balkan to this very day, when I talk to people about the Trinity, nobody can tell me what the Trinity is. Hmm. Yes, they heard about the Father, they heard about the Holy Spirit, they heard about the Son, they heard about those concepts, but yeah. nevertheless, they never heard about this then being God, a triune yeah. God. That sounds crazy to most people. Matter of fact, when I started learning, I actually talked to my father for the very first time in my life about religion. And I asked him, hey, what do you think about the Trinity? And he told me, what is that? You know? So I started explaining to him, yeah, well, the father is not the son and the son is not the Holy Spirit, but they're all God. You know, that's how it works. And he looked at me and he said, that is the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. That's absolutely ridiculous. And if this is really what Muslims believe, then so be it. You know, let them. And I said, no, 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 you misunderstood me. I'm not talking about Muslims whatsoever. This is what we are supposed to believe. And for the very first time in my life, I saw my father actually being shocked, actually being shocked about the religion. And he said, ah, this can't be, this can't be. And usually he brushes off information like this. You know, I'm his son after all, so he's my father. He's not going to engage too much with the information. He's old school. But this time around, even three days later, he was still on his phone researching the Trinity. He couldn't understand what this was. He said, this is so insane. Who came up with this? It doesn't make any sense. And I told him, yeah, I see it the same way. So to cut the long story short, I was the first one to actually research it. I was the first one to actually stumble across the Trinity. And then I went so far that I went to Greece to Mount Athos, which is a little island secluded. And you only have practicing monks and bishops and archbishops. Only men are allowed on this island for over a thousand years. Some of them never saw a woman in their life, ever. They're secluded and they're worshiping God in their own ways. However, they are the first Orthodox Christians. So I went there again on the search for answers and I talked to them and nobody could give me a clear cut answer. Nothing really made sense. You know, mm -hmm. nothing really made sense. And so therefore coming back from that pilgrimage, usually Orthodox Christians are very uplifted after that. For them, it is like going to Mecca, you know, and mm -hmm. they feel light and they feel happy. But I came back, I was destroyed. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, they be, you know, I've been searching for so long. I returned to Christianity and now it again doesn't make any sense. It again doesn't make any sense. I still am searching. How can that be? Now I'm in my 30s and I'm still searching. That's ridiculous. This can't be how a man operates. You know, I have to be upon truth. And so this is when I decided, sneaky old me, to <laughs> debunk Islam. I came to the conclusion, you know what? There is only one way to set this straight. I know that Christianity is true. There must be a misconception within my own perception here. Yes. I'm going to debunk Islam. And once I debunked it, I was even thinking about doing it on YouTube, you know, like a David Wood or something and talking against Islam. And then I will have more faith again in my own religion. Mm -hmm. And so this is why I opened up finally the Quran, you know. And just after opening it up, it took maybe one night or so. It's I couldn't believe it. Ah, that was that quick. Yeah, because at first I was looking at finding the devil within the Quran. And I talked about this on my channel as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously we seek refuge in Allah away from the devil. You know? And when I read this, I was like, okay, nice trick. You know, he must be somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was pretty ridiculous. So very, very quickly, I realized that the Quran, at least, is setting it very, very straight. And it's bringing the Christians away from the Trinity back to the monotheism. Yeah. And this is when I actually talked with my wife about it quickly. And I said, hey, I think they have a point here. You know, that's pretty good. They're kind of calling the Christians back to monotheism. You know? And she got so outraged because she knows me. When I open up something, one chapter, then I go full blown into it. And she already knew it was settled then and there, you know. But for me, I was still struggling, still fighting with it. At first, I thought, oh, maybe the Quran is a book for itself. And the Muslims do it wrong. Maybe yeah. that's... Maybe that's what's happening, you know, because all the Muslims I met, they weren't really practicing. So therefore, maybe the Quran is right, but not the Muslims, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, anyways, what I was saying is it wasn't a light bulb moment per se, but it was a gradual progression. 
And then after reading the Quran, really from cover to cover, I couldn't deny the truth anymore. Then it was just my ego still fighting, 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 fighting until I finally submitted. However, the truth was apparent to me after reading the Quran because it was so commonsensical. Mm -hmm. You know, it is so ridiculous when I see Christians nowadays attacking the Quran and yeah, but the Trinity makes more sense because the Father loves the Son. And if there is no Father that loves the Son, then there is no love in God. What are you talking about? It's so ridiculous, right? Even yeah. before the Trinity conceptualization, everybody said within the lands of Jesus, for example, may peace be upon him, that God is one, right? Mm -hmm. That is the Jewish Shema as well. So yeah, the Quran was for me the eye-opener, basically. All right, guys, but this is it for today. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.